storm clouds over America. Storm clouds that will leave desolation and stark famine in their wake if allowed to ravage unchecked. For these clouds are composed of countless millions of insects that devour and destroy every living thing with which they come in contact. Their numbers are without end. Their courage is boundless. Their appetites are enormous. They are man's chief competitors for the good things of the earth. Insects are the most destructive and dangerous form of life in all the world. No other force of nature is such a threat to man's security as are the insects. For over an entire continent, they can devour man's food, his clothing, his very shelter. Insects can eat a thousand times their own weight every day. They outnumber men by billions to one. Their forces are constantly being increased. More than two billion dollars worth of damage is done each year by these merciless invading hordes. Under a magnifying lens, the insects that make up these clouds of doom show up in all their true ferocity. Their weapons are razor-edged claws, strong teeth, powerfully muscled jaws, and many are protected by hard armor plate. Man must maintain a constant warfare against the insect ravages. Many ways of combat are known, but the best method of fighting them is with poisons. Without poisons to battle the insects, there would soon be little for men to eat, not enough for the ever-increasing population of the world today. And so it has come about that our very lives depend upon substances which, used otherwise, would result in violent death to us. Many poisons are used in this never-ending struggle. There are liquid poisons sprayed from handguns where the gardens are small, and other liquid poisons that are sprayed high into the air by powerful pumps protecting beautiful shade trees. Still other poisons in the form of a powdery dust can be spread from tractors with special systems of pipes and blowers. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of poisons of sodium arsenate, Paris green, Bordeaux mixture, lead arsenate, nicotine, calcium arsenate, and others are used each year. A small dose of any one of these compounds, if taken internally, would prove violently fatal to a human being. But when used in the correct manner, by men skilled and trained in this exacting work, such as the pilot who flies this crop dusting plane, these poisonous compounds bring untold benefits to mankind. Poisons preserve our cereals, fruits, and other crops from the depredations of the boll weevil on the cotton plantations, the Colorado potato beetle, the scale beetle on fruit trees, from the coddling moth, the corn borer, the gypsy moth, and from all the other countless insect invaders. Other compounds that are violent poisons contribute to our health and safety too. For instance, there are the disinfectants that keep our homes and hospitals free from germs and diseases. Fumigation, by means of a lethal gas, sulfur dioxide from sulfur candles, prevents the spread of infectious diseases and so helps keep down epidemics. Fire extinguishers for protecting our homes, lives, and property are loaded with deadly liquids of various kinds, such as carbon tetrachloride. And one of the most virulent of all family are first methyl alcohol, CH3OH, second ethyl alcohol, C2H5OH, third propyl alcohol, C3H7OH, fourth butyl alcohol, C4H9OH, and fifth amyl alcohol, C5H11OH. The alcohol family is second only to water in its importance to modern industry. The alcohols have a definite place in our environment, but like all the other poisons, that place is outside the human body. As a family, these alcohols are much alike. They have many things in common. For instance, all are composed of the same elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in varying amounts. They are all colorless liquids, and every one of them has a low freezing point. Each member of the alcohol family burns readily, and gives off intense heat. They are excellent solvents too, that is they will dissolve materials that water does not dissolve, and they boil easily, although each alcohol in the family has its own temperature at which the boiling takes place. These and other properties that the alcohols possess 
give them many important uses in modern industry. For instance, amyl alcohol finds a place as a valuable raw material in the manufacture of fine pharmaceuticals. Butyl alcohol supplies the characteristic rich gleaming gloss to the lacquers that are used on today's automobiles. Propyl alcohol is the best liquid yet discovered for extracting drugs for external uses from herbs and other crude drug materials. Large quantities of methyl or wood alcohol are used for the antifreeze solutions that protect automobile radiators from the dangers of zero weather. Ethyl alcohol, however, has more industrial uses than all the other members of the alcohol family put together, chiefly because ethyl alcohol is a superior drying out agent and an excellent solvent. These properties make it a vital material in the manufacture of clothing and also of the plastic materials which are playing a more and more important role in our everyday lives. Ethyl alcohol is necessary for making all kinds of photographic film. The ethyl gasoline that helps take the knock out of our automobile engines and also makes possible the drugs and anesthetics that relieve pain and permit intricate operations. But the members of the alcohol family have another outstanding property in common. They all interfere with the growth and development of living tissue, that is anything that lives and grows. Here's a simple experiment that shows the effect of ethyl alcohol on life. Water drops on the seeds in one of the plates. Ethyl alcohol drops on the seeds in the second plate. The seeds in the third plate are subjected to a solution of strychnine. A special photographic treatment shows on the screen in a few seconds action that actually required five days to take place and enables us to watch the results. The seeds fed on water grew steadily. The strychnine stimulated the plants at first and then killed them. But the ethyl alcohol was so deadly in its effects that the seeds never even got a chance to start growing. Ethyl alcohol is the only member of the family of alcohols which is deliberately produced for beverages, beer, wine, and whiskey. Here is a prominent psychiatrist noted for his success in studying and treating alcoholism whose writings are standard references on the subject. He is Dr. Robert V. Seliger, psychiatrist at the Johns Hopkins Hospital and instructor in psychiatry at the Johns Hopkins University Medical School. Dr. Seliger says, Those who suffer from alcoholism, the effects of alcohol, are recruited entirely from individuals who are or who are looked upon as casual and social drinkers. The effects of alcohol on the individual are, first, the narcotizing effect of alcohol, which removes the control of the higher cerebral centers. Second, with the lessening of self-control, judgment, and habits of behavior, the drinker becomes aggressive, pugnacious, and dangerous to the extent that after imbibing even small quantities of alcohol, he may commit murder. This behavior is evidence of the poisonous effect of alcohol on the mind. Suicide, sullen, and other antisocial behavior are other evidences of this effect. Third, alcohol cripples the mind, may cause insanity of many types, and the brain may be so poisoned by alcohol that the individual may die. Delirium tremens, mental deterioration, continuously hearing imaginary voices, and paralysis of the legs are some of the results of the poisonous effects of alcohol on the nervous system. Fourth, under certain conditions and in certain individuals, alcohol is not only a mental poison, but severely damages the body in its vital organs and structures. Fifth, and perhaps the most serious, the habit of taking small amounts of alcohol causes a vast amount of inefficiency which leads to premature discontinuance of useful work, shortening life, and in an alcoholic home, so crippling the development of their personalities that the children have little chance for happiness and success in life. All the effects of beer, wine, and the stronger liquors are due to the ethyl alcohol content. There are thousands of alcoholics in our land. Although many alcoholics are past correction, certain selected patients can be helped and guided to the goal of therapy. In concluding, I wish to stress the following. 
First, alcohol is an important and widely used poison. Second, the action of alcohol is that of a narcotic, paralyzing control and restraint. Next, the real treatment of alcoholics is embodied in society's attitude towards drinking. Persistent and constant education on the effect of alcohol on the individual and society is indicated to adults as well as youth as of the utmost importance. And last, total abstinence is the goal of all treatment.